Hi, I'm Grant Imahara, and Mouser and I are empowering innovation together. I've been ordering parts from Mouser since I was in college, basically their age. We're here at Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute to take a look at some of their cutting edge innovations in robotics. Now while I'm looking around, I want to challenge you to share your ideas about the future of robotics. How can they help us now and beyond? Submit your ideas below and you'll get a free t-shirt and the chance to see your idea on a future Spotlight episode. But for now, stay tuned. I'm off to find some robots. This is Marcelli Bear. He's the director of the Robotics Institute here at Carnegie Mellon University. And you guys have been on the cutting edge of innovation since when? Uh, from uh, 1978 is when the uh, institute was created. Wow. Now, for, how long have you been here? I have been here about 30 years. In fact, uh, actually 30 years. <laughs> and in fact, I've been here about as long as this robot. Okay, mm -hmm. so what's this one? Uh, this one is uh, called the Terrigator. Uh, it's a robot that was designed for autonomous driving okay. uh, outdoors. So in fact, this is one of the very, very first attempts at uh, autonomous driving outdoors. Yeah. Now, of course, it doesn't look like a car or anything. This was 1984, uh, but this was one of the first items that we had uh, here at CMU. It looks like, like it's got these really fat tires. It looks like it's designed to be off-road. Yes. And yes. I can see right here, this is a ring of ultrasonic Actually, sensors. This yeah. is, those are ultrasonic sensors. However, this was not the uh, set of sensors that was originally used. Oh, really? Uh, now, originally it used a uh, camera and yeah. a laser run trainer, which in fact for its time was a very advanced device. Yes. Those devices are now commonly used on practically any robot that right. are out there, mobile robots right. at least. That, that, yeah. that are self-navigating. Mm -hmm. Well, let me show you another, another one here. So this is one extreme, 1984. Yeah. 30 years later, uh, this is a boss. I actually uh, recognize uh, this one. Yes, you had some involvement with yeah, this. Yeah, I was, uh, so, uh, one of my former co-workers and I were hosting this event. This is from the DARPA mm. Grand Challenge, right? Yeah. Uh, urban Challenge. The Urban Challenge. The Urban, urban Challenge. challenge. There, were, there were several DARPA challenges. This yeah. one is for the Urban Challenge, which involved driving on roads in traffic yeah. with other cars and, and, and so forth. Okay. Yeah, this one did really well. This one yeah. won yes. the competition, yes. if I remember correctly. Yes. yes. Uh, and in fact, it uh, inspired a lot of the work that is now going on on self-driving car. And yeah. so you can see from one side of the uh, high bay here to the other side, the uh, 30 years difference between the two. Yeah. This is, this is what we achieved, basically. Now, interestingly, I guess in those days, they didn't have GPS. That's right. Uh, well, th there was GPS, but not the kind not that we Not available to yeah. civilians. Yeah. And this has LiDAR. Mm -hmm. And it has, what else does it, it's got actually it has like half a dozen, dozen Yeah, it has, it, it has uh, radar, it has uh, cameras, uh, several, several types of, of cameras, uh, uh -huh. standard cameras. Uh, now, 30 years ago on the Terrigator, some of those sensors existed, yeah. except they were not nearly as good. Right. They were not nearly as um, affordable uh, or, or small and low power and so forth. Yeah. Not only that, the processing power available then versus Absolutely. now. Absolutely. This does all of the processing in real time on this vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in fact, on the Terrigator, I remember those days where we had a big cable going from this thing <laughs> over there back to the building. This was a major logistical uh, operation. This is all self-contained, of course. Yeah. Uh, and wh what that enables us to do is to do what used to not be possible, uh, to do very complex processing of the uh, visual data. One of the yeah. things that is necessary for this is that the vehicle, the robot, has to be able to see right. and be able to think. Right. It's not just a matter of making decision and driving it's the motors. It's not just going right? to waypoints. It right. has to decide, is there an obstacle in exactly. there? And it has to do this very fast. Think how fast you have to do it uh, in, in uh, real life uh, driving. I've, I've seen this thing drive. Yeah. And it's not like, it doesn't poke long. Mm -hmm. It drives uh, very yeah. aggressively. So this is a completely different kind of robotics, okay? Uh, this is something that we're very excited about that people here have been doing uh, for a, uh, quite a long time. This is, by the way, this whole area is part of what we call the uh, Field Robotics Center, okay. which basically looks at robots in the field, in various uh, tasks in Out the field. Out in the environment as opposed yeah. to being in the lab. Exactly. Uh, so this one uh, really focuses on the, uh, what we call robotics uh, science, or, or robotic science di discovery. 
Okay. Uh, so this is designed for exploration, for example, uh, exploration of desert environment, mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps as a prototype for uh, planetary exploration. Sure. And its uh, objective is to do science. In other words, take measurements, discover perhaps new minerals, soil samples, uh, soil samples and, and so forth. Uh, and the idea, of course, is to be able to do exploration for a very long time, and be hence. able to navigate itself without human uh, intervention, yeah. uh, perhaps be able to identify areas that are interesting from a scientific standpoint, yeah. and be able to re-explore them, and that sort of thing. And so it's able to do this for a long time, mm. and that's why you have the solar panels. Uh, yes, yes, in particular. Yes. Maintain. Yes. So those are the uh, smaller uh, robots. Those are also robots to uh, uh, drive uh, outdoors. Um, there's an interesting backstory for those robots. They were actually built for a DARPA project, yeah. uh, which was one of the um, uh, early projects, or one of the first projects, uh, exploring the uh, use of uh, machine learning together with perception uh, okay. with robots. So the idea is that the robots somehow need to learn how to drive. Yeah. Imagine you put a robot in a completely new type of terrain. It has to understand how to how am I going to drive on this terrain, okay? Given my sensors, cameras, and right. lasers, and all that. Uh, so this was a project to do this uh, this type of uh, uh, learning. So it tries one way of driving, and then manages decides is this the most efficient way, and if not, then right. it tries another way. Exactly, exactly. So if cool. I've seen you know this type of color, shape, and so forth. I know from my previous experience that's yeah. probably an obstacle, that sort of thing. Right. Uh, uh, those are, again, uh, robots for uh, extreme uh, environment. This is uh, something called Icebreaker. Uh, and this is a robot, as you can see, this is a mean-looking robot. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and this is uh, designed to drive on a very steep slope. Yeah. So in particular, again, this is f in the spirit of exploration robot. Yeah. So exploring volcanoes, for example, where you have extremely steep slope, uh, yeah. with sand and things that it's are got, very hard and to it's drive. Got a, it's got big tracks, but a low center of gravity, right. and the a thing, lot of surface area for exactly. your... And the trains. thing it has in the middle, you see this pole here, yeah. is something that can be actuated and descended into the ground oh, in right. desperation, basically, uh, so that you can, for example, turn in place on an extremely steep slope. Oh, yes, yeah, okay. so you can like anchor right. yourself and yeah. then turn. Yeah. So oh, the yeah. challenges are very different, right? The challenges for bus is to drive in traffic and interact with this very dynamic environment. Yeah. The challenge for Zoe is to be able to do uh, exploration over yeah. a very long duration. The challenge for this guy is to be able to drive on uh, extreme, uh, extreme terrain. Right, basically. so these are all the same theme of exploration. Yes. And innovation, yeah. but different, different terrains, different environments. Yeah. So let me show you an extreme case of uh, exploration. Now this is an early uh, prototype, okay? Um, All right, what is this? What are we looking at here? So we're looking at a robot that uh, is designed to uh, go on the moon okay. and do some exploration. This is part of the, uh, what is called the Lunar X uh, uh, project, yeah. uh, uh, where uh, a robot uh, is supposed to land on the moon and explore for about 500 meters uh, uh, on, the, on the moon. So of course, this is a particularly challenging project yeah. uh, because the um, Obviously, uh, the uh, remote aspects of the environment are particularly difficult. Right, yeah. right. And you can see, but you can see the same components as you see on all of the robots, right? You yeah. have mobility components. Yes. You need to design everything that moves correctly for the environment. Uh, you have uh, some uh, vision component the robot has to see. So you yeah. still have cameras and things like this. Yes. Uh, and you have inside, of course, uh, computing and intelligence. So right. you always have those three components in all of those, uh, all of those robots. Cool. And this one has a communication aspect? Uh, yes, yes, of course, yeah. Now, again, what you're looking at here is, a, is an early uh, prototype design. Uh, yeah. The real thing, actually, which should be at the center here, is actually a way uh, for demonstration today. Uh -huh. So unfortunately, you won't get to see it today. You're running it through <laughs> trials as we speak. Yes. Uh, this is a uh, uh, robot that is designed for uh, testing um, high speed, basically high speed driving on rough terrain. Okay. Uh, depending on, so some application uh, call for larger robots, as you, as you have seen some of those, especially the ones that, has, that have to carry people. Mm -hmm. uh, some robots, uh, uh, call for uh, some application, sorry, call for uh, very small robots. Uh, this is an right. example of that. Very small and very uh, highly capable. 
Yes. So this is one of those. Uh, we also have robots that are even smaller, that have shapes like snakes and things like that. Oh, really? Like that. Uh, can uh, we see one of those? Yes, yes, you can, uh, of course. Excellent. As on the side, uh, in this particular area of field robotics, we're looking primarily at tracks and wheeled robots yeah. uh, because of the nature of the applications. Uh, but they can come in many different shapes, and snake is one of them. Sure. Uh, if you're, say, doing, uh, I don't know, rescue or something rescue, like that. Rescue, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, mine, uh, uh, exploring yeah. things like pipes, sewers, things like that, of <laughs> course. Yes. So this is not a robot, but it illustrates some of the uh, more mundane things that have to be done here. You know, some of this has to do with very... Um, what can I say, flashy or sexy uh, artificial intelligence and I'm glad things that we like agree that. that that's flashy and sexy. That's flashy and sexy. <laughs> um, and then there are other things that are a little bit hidden that people don't necessarily realize. So for example, doing um, testing of the components under very harsh conditions, yeah. like vacuum testing. Right. Okay? Uh, extreme we have temperature. Extreme temperature and all that. Yeah. So in terms of engineering, it's actually very important because people have to realize that uh, to do this kind of thing, you need basically all aspects of uh, all the aspects of engineering, all of them. Uh, it's not just you know um, advanced computer science or AI. Uh, it's not just uh, you know basic mechanical design. It's it's everything. So this is a, uh, a test bed. Now again, this does not look like a fancy robot or anything. But uh, the problem is, if you want to design a robot that has to operate in a particular uh, terrain, particular yeah. soil type, etc., you need to, of course, test that your design can operate in that environment. Sure. Uh, so this is a test bed to test uh, soil interaction. So basically interaction between wheels and tracks and so forth and different types of soils and yeah. do actual uh, uh, measurement got, and things. You got a yeah. bunch of different yeah. types of wheels that's over right, there. That's right. So we have also outside uh, agencies and lab uh, who uh, ask us to test their, their design and so forth. So this is just okay. to show you some of the, um, you know, um, uh, things that go behind the scene, basically, in, in building and designing those robots. Nice. Everything, everything here in the field robotics lab is covered in dust <laughs> of different <laughs> kinds. Yes. These those, are robots that get out in the world. Yes, and many of those robots actually, uh, I mean, in, in, at least in the, in the center and in the Robotics Institute in general, I've traveled basically all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, sometimes in very difficult environment, in deserts and things like that. So, Marshall, I hear that some of your work has inspired a movie, is that right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? I'm not going to tell you any more about it. Okay. I absolutely need to let my colleague, uh, Chris Atkinson, uh, tell you all about it. And I certainly would never uh, steal the limelight from him. So okay, well, let's, let's go, go talk to him. Yeah. Thank you.